They say the best things in life are free, but does that apply to GPUs? Well recently, I was given a GPU by my coworker because I'm the computer guy, and my morbid curiosity prevents me from testing it. For those of you who don't have experience with 11 year old entry level GPUs, this is an R7 240 with 2 gigs of VRAM. Based on the GCN1 architecture, we have 320 cores, 20 TMUs, and 8 ROPs. And that 2 gigs of GDDR3 VRAM gets a larger memory bus than what the newest RTX 3050 gets. The TDP of this card is 30 watts, meaning that will fit into just about any PC you can put it into, even the pre-builds that have a 35 watt limit on a PCIe slot. When this card was new, it cost $69, but nowadays it can be had in the $20 to $30 range. So for the price of dinner for two at Chili's, how well can we game? For the test system, we're using my everyday gaming PC with a Ryzen 5 5600, 32 gigs of DDR4 clocked in at 4000 megahertz, everything's installed on SSD, and we are running Arch Linux. And also, a little surprise for this GPU, game compatibility Compatibility actually is not that bad for once on an old GPU because AMD decided to bet on Vulkan and DX12, meaning we actually have basic DX12 support. A little disclaimer because I'm sure somebody's going to ask about it, all of the games are running at 1200p because the HDMI port on this GPU hated my main monitors, so I had to whip out my Apple Cinema display to test things using DVI. Starting with the most popular game in the world, we have CS2. Running the game at 1200p lowest settings, we got an average of 37.5 FPS and a 1% low of 23.5, testing in a Dust 2 deathmatch. While the FPS figures here aren't that bad, given the nature of CS2 and how floaty it can feel at lower FPS, I wouldn't call this a great experience if you're playing a deathmatch. However, if you're playing competitive, you will likely see higher FPS, so if you want to try and get Global Elite 2 with a $20 GPU, please be my guest. For a more modern indie experience, I decided to test Battlebit Remastered as it's one of my personal favorite games currently. Playing at 1200p potato settings in a 127v127 game, we got an average of 47.9 and a 1% low of 29.2. Despite the average FPS figures not being massively different here, Battlebit feels considerably better to play and considerably less floaty. The only real slowdown we saw was when anybody would throw a smoke and then FPS would crawl to a slideshow. The results we got here are actually not that far off from the Vega 8 iGPU and an old ThinkPad I tested on the channel a few months ago, and if you're interested in that video, I'll go ahead and put it in the corner now, and while you're exploring that, maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing. So we've tested esports and we've tested indie games, but how does a AAA game fare on a $20 GPU? To test that, I decided to play GTA 5. Playing at 1200p lowest settings, we got an average of 29 FPS and a 1% low of 23. Playing through the prologue like this, there were definite drops from 30 FPS, but we're playing at 1200p, there's plenty of room to drop the resolution, and if you were playing at 1080p like a sane person, you'd probably see closer to 30 FPS most of the time, meaning you can get your AAA fix on a $20 GPU. And given that we have fairly modern API support, I decided to go and give Forza Horizon 5 a try. The game would launch, despite telling me that my GPU was a glorified virus, however, anytime you tried to actually get into the game past the settings menu, it would crash the game and Steam for some reason, so uh, Forza Horizon 5 is a no-go. Because I don't own Crisis, instead I decided to go for Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> Playing at 720p, lowest settings, no upscaling because they took FSR1 out of the game and every other upscaling method either doesn't work or cuts performance in half. We got an average of 11 FPS and a 1% low of 7.5 FPS. Now I think the term slideshow gets thrown around quite a bit, I mean I know I've used it in this video, but this is not a slideshow. This feels more like a heavily compressed video I'd see on a website in 2003. Cyberpunk was the last game I had actual benchmark results for. I had wanted to get more, but a mixture of the very old drivers and old architecture of this card made it to where a lot of games wouldn't launch or my benchmarking software just didn't like them. But as a general rule of thumb, I would say that anything Xbox 360 era or earlier will work perfectly fine on this GPU. Also, if you want to use this card the way it was intended as a display adapter, desktop usage is perfectly fine even 11 years after launch. 4K YouTube posed no issues and using the desktop felt snappy as it would with my normal GPU. And of course, I have to ask the question I ask at the end of every video, would I recommend you go out and buy this GPU? 
And the answer is a little bit more complicated than you might think. For the $20 to $30 price that this GPU usually goes for, you can get something considerably more powerful like a GTX 780. And while that will give you considerably better gaming performance, although you will have worse API support, it sucks down power and does a whole lot bigger than this tiny single slot card. With a TDP of only 30 watts and the ability to use a low profile bracket, this GPU will go into basically any PC made in the past 15 years, no problems. And there are plenty of other display adapters that you can get at this price, and I think at the $20 to $30 range, it's a bit steep, but if you can get a deal on this, I think that this GPU could provide a nice performance benefit to old PCs using Intel GMA or older Intel HD graphics. It's also worth noting that if you want to spend that full $20 to $30, there's a 4GB version of this card, which, depending on your use case for it, might be a benefit, although for most cases, the video memory was not the hindrance. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed me testing a piece of PC hardware instead of a laptop or phone like I usually do. It's something I hope to do more of in the future. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it helps more people find the channel and monthly random tech videos are what I do here. Now I'm Jackson the Nerd and I will see you all for the next one.